Welcome to Get Sleepy, where we listen, we relax, and we get sleepy. I'm your host, Thomas. Thanks so much for tuning in. Tonight, Heather will be reading to us in a special story for Thanksgiving. This uniquely American holiday often gives reason for big family events to be organized, but it's also a time to celebrate with friends. This evening, we'll join four neighbors in an apartment building as they create their own unique gathering. Small spaces and compact kitchens are no obstacle to great food or fellowship, and each friend contributes something special that they grew up eating at their family Thanksgivings in different parts of the country. Let's just take a moment to settle in and unwind, like we always do here on Get Sleepy. If you need to adjust your position to get more comfortable, go ahead and do that. Then, come to rest in calm and stillness as your body sinks into the bed. Just consciously slow your breathing, even if it's just by a little, to help relieve any stress or tension that you're holding on to. And with each exhale of the breath, sense yourself moving deeper into relaxation and into rest. If you're noticing a build-up of disruptive feelings or sensations, don't go hard on yourself for that. It's quite natural for us to become aware of such things when we're laying in bed at night, without the distractions of the day to keep our minds occupied. But again, using each exhale of your breath, just give permission to let those disruptive sensations dissipate. You're in a place now that is safe, cozy, and peaceful. So just gradually allow your body and mind to embrace that same aura. You too can feel safe, cozy, and peaceful grateful for the opportunity to rest as you listen along to this sweet Thanksgiving story. So now, on a brisk and sunny day in late November, we're transported to an apartment building in the city where there is a wonderful feast in our near future. This is where our story begins. Melissa awoke in mid-morning to the tantalizing aroma of coffee coming from the kitchen. Rolling over in her bed, she stretched luxuriously and looked out the window. The old maple tree outside had lost most of its leaves at this point. Without peering down, she knew there were small piles of them here and there on the ground. 
It was always fun to shuffle through them when she walked outside. The sun shone brilliantly through the tree branches, through the glass, and into her bedroom, making little squares on her wood floor that mimicked the pattern of the window. She reached over and lightly touched the pane with her fingers. It was ice cold, she thought approvingly. Sunny and brisk was the perfect type of cozy weather for Thanksgiving. Pulling the soft comforter aside, Melissa swung her legs down to the side of the bed and worked her feet into her slippers. Then, standing up, she pulled her most comfortable cardigan off the cushy armchair in the corner. She made her way out of the bedroom and into the main living area of her apartment, slipping her arms into the sleeves one by one. Her faithful coffee pot was waiting for her in the compact kitchenette. Choosing a mug from her favorite diner, she poured herself a steaming cup. First, she needed to get the pumpkin pie crust in the oven. With a happy sense of anticipation, she set the oven to preheat. Then she pulled an airtight metal container from the cupboard and lightly floured one of her two small countertops. Digging in the crowded area under the counter, she produced a large rolling pin and also patted that with some flour. Then she opened the fridge and removed a chilled disc of dough. She had made it yesterday so that it would be ready and waiting for her this morning. She unwrapped it and set it on the surface. Then, working methodically, she rolled and pushed, rolled and pushed the dough outward from the center, doing her best to create a round shape with an even thickness. When the pie crust was big enough, she laid it carefully in the glass pie plate and shaped it firmly into the bottom, carefully pushing the edges into pretty indentations. When the entire plate was full of dough, she trimmed the extra edges carefully with a knife. Placing some parchment paper in the center, she weighed it down with dried beans and put it in the preheated oven to bake briefly. The beans would weigh down the center of the crust and keep it from inflating in the oven. The apartment soon began to fill the comforting smell of warm pie crust. Inhaling the bready smell deeply, she wrapped her hands appreciatively around her warm mug and surveyed the room. Today, she would be hosting a potluck meal. In the true sense of the holiday, she and her three neighbors would be pooling their resources and gathering in her apartment to enjoy their Thanksgiving dinner together. Since each of them lived in separate one-bedroom units, 
in Melissa's building. They would have to get creative to fit. Nobody minded. They were just glad to be having a meal together. Melissa looked at the drop-leaf wooden table she kept in the nook by the kitchen. Normally, she had the sides folded down to conserve space. Today, however, she would pull it into the center of the room and put the leaves up. That way, she would definitely be able to seat four people for dinner. Her kitchen counter space was also limited, so they would have to figure out where to lay out all the food. But the important thing was that they were going to have a fun afternoon together. Since she was hosting everyone, in addition to her pumpkin pie, Melissa had offered to make the turkey and the gravy. She couldn't imagine Thanksgiving without fresh cranberry relish, so she had already prepared some of that as well. It had been an easy condiment to make in advance, and it would keep nicely in the refrigerator until the dinner hour came around. Her next-door neighbor, Nikki, was contributing some important side dishes. Being from the upper Midwest, she insisted that they couldn't have Thanksgiving without a green bean casserole. In addition to that... She had promised buttery mashed potatoes and an apple pie. Dan, who lived downstairs from Melissa, had been excited about making the stuffing. He hadn't revealed what type of recipe it would be. However, since he was a vegetarian, they all knew it would be something delicious and meat-free. He was also making a corn casserole that was apparently a staple in his family. Lastly, he had promised a salad. The others had been a little surprised at the inclusion of a salad in their Thanksgiving spread but Dan insisted it was extremely common where he grew up on the West Coast. The fourth person was Lila. She lived downstairs next to Dan. Lila was from South Carolina, and she insisted that it wouldn't be Thanksgiving if she didn't bring homemade macaroni and cheese. She had also eagerly offered to make a pecan pie, which had always been a staple at her family Thanksgivings growing up. With three pies planned, Melissa had joked that they might want to eat dessert first. The timer went off, bringing Melissa's focus back to her pie. She carefully removed the crust from the oven. It was half done. She got a fork out of the silverware drawer. Then she carefully removed the parchment paper and the dried beans and set them aside. After removing them, she lightly pricked the uncooked center of the pie with the fork. She knew this would keep it from puffing up now that the pie weights were gone. Then she returned the pie crust to the oven to finish baking. It would be ready soon. 
Satisfied with her progress so far, Melissa chose some music to listen to and then refilled her mug. She walked into the living space and surveyed the room. Setting down her coffee, she gently pulled the drop leaf table away from the wall. It was on wheels, so it rolled very quietly across the room until she had it centered in an open area. She lifted the table leaves. Yes, she thought, this size will do nicely. Opening up the storage chest that she used as a coffee table, she carefully moved items around until she found a stack of pretty linen napkins. She saved these for special occasions. Closing the lid of the chest, she took the napkins to the table and laid them out flat. She removed the first one from the pile and spread it out, folding it into a series of clever triangles. She created a little tent that would stand on the plate. Fancy napkin folding was one of the oddly useful skills she'd learned as a server in a restaurant. It never failed to impress her friends. After folding all four napkins into crisp little decorations, she retrieved some dinner plates and silverware from the kitchen cabinet. These actually did not match. She had the remaining pieces of several sets of both dishes and the cutlery she'd inherited from friends and family. Nonetheless, it made a festive table setting, especially when she took a few different votive candles from the bookshelf and placed them in the middle of the table. Perfect. Melissa took a notepad and pen from the kitchen drawer and sipped her coffee while making a simple to-do list. She would put together her pumpkin pie filling next and get that pie back in the oven. It would take about an hour to bake. After that, the preparation and roasting of the turkey would be the last thing she completed. In the meantime, she was free to get dressed and maybe even visit her friends to peek at their own cooking projects. As she set down her list, the timer notified her that her pie crust was done. She pulled it from the oven and admired it. It was lightly toasted all over and looked perfect. She set the baked pie shell on the opposite counter and prepared to mix up her pumpkin filling. First, she arranged all her ingredients on the counter. Using a large mixing bowl and a whisk, she started by putting together pureed pumpkin, eggs, and brown sugar. After that, she added milk and several spices, including delicious-smelling cinnamon, which was her favorite. When the filling was well-blended, She carefully poured it into the warm crust, making sure not to overfill the pie. Once she was satisfied that the pie was filled properly, she placed it back in the oven 
and set the timer again. It would be ready in a bit under an hour. Taking her coffee back to her room, Melissa opened up her closet. She and her three friends had all agreed to make this a very casual affair. So she selected a nice pair of jeans and her favorite soft, cozy sweater. Then, still feeling comfy in her slippers, she decided to go next door and visit Nikki while the pumpkin pie was in the oven. Melissa stepped out into the carpeted hallway and closed her front door. She walked down one apartment and paused at Nikki's place. A tantalizing smell of warm apple pie was wafting into the hallway and Melissa could hear Nikki singing as she cooked. She smiled to herself, knowing that Nikki loved some good karaoke and that she probably didn't care if the entire apartment building heard her. Melissa knocked on the door and the singing stopped. Nikki pulled it open and greeted her warmly, telling her to come in. What luck, she continued. You are here just in time to witness the preparation of the green bean casserole. Indeed, Melissa had never seen anyone make a green bean casserole, although she had heard about them for many years. She followed Nikki through her apartment, which was a mirror image of Melissa's own place, but filled with mismatched collection of homey furniture she'd taken from her parents' house when she moved out. The effect was warm and cheerful. Melissa always enjoyed coming over here. The preparations in the kitchen were well underway. A large casserole dish sat on the counter. Next to it was a colander full of bright, blanched green beans. There was also a can of mushroom soup, some milk, pepper, and a can of fried onions. With great flourish, Nikki spread the mushroom soup, milk, pepper, and some of the onions in the casserole and mixed them all together. Then she put the green beans into the soup mixture and gently stirred it to combine. With that, she turned to Melissa and put her hands in the air. It's almost done, she said with a smile. I just have to bake it right before I come over and add the extra crispy onion topping. Then... Covering the dish with plastic wrap, she slid it into the refrigerator for later. In contrast to the very simple casserole, Nikki's apple pie appeared to be a work of art. It sat cooling on a rack, smelling absolutely heavenly. The top was covered with an artful lattice pattern. Melissa was truly impressed. She asked Nikki what type of apples she used. Granny Smith, Nikki answered very seriously. Then she added, it's what my grandma always used. Nikki nodded with appreciation 
she couldn't wait to try this pie. Looking around the kitchen, Melissa realized one of Nikki's dishes was missing. Where are the potatoes? Melissa asked. Nikki winked at her and pointed to a large pot sitting on the stove. Peeking inside, Melissa saw a huge mound of peeled yellow potatoes submerged in water. Nikki explained that as long as they were under the salt water, they wouldn't get brown. They were all ready for her to boil and whip up right before dinner. Since Nikki's preparations seemed to be pausing for now, Melissa asked her if she wanted to go downstairs and visit Lila. Nikki thought it was a wonderful idea. She washed up, hanging the dish towel over the oven handle and said she was ready. Leaving the mouth-watering scent of apple pie behind them, they both entered the hall and closed Nikki's door firmly behind them. It took but a moment to go down the stairwell, down to Lila's apartment, which was directly underneath Nikki's. They knocked on the door and heard Lila speaking to someone as she approached. When she opened it, they saw that she was on the phone. She seemed to be wishing someone a happy Thanksgiving. She was wearing an apron covered in flour, and a dish towel was slung over her shoulder. Smiling broadly, she stood aside and motioned to the two friends to come inside. They stepped into her living area, which was furnished in a very elegant style. The couch was velvet and faux fur pillows were lined on it and around the floor. Melissa always loved coming to Lila's place. It felt like a palace. A tall stock pot steamed on the stove in the kitchen and a box of elbow macaroni stood next to it. Sitting on a nearby cutting board was a cheese grater. It was surrounded by mountainous piles of grated yellow cheese. Lila noticed her guest staring at it and grinned. It's 24 ounces total, she said with delight. She showed them a smaller pot on the stove where she would be making all of it into a decadent cheese sauce that started with milk and flour. Nikki pointed to a pie plate that was resting on the other counter. The pie crust was already pressed into it with pretty fluted edges and the bottom was filled with chopped pecans. It looks like you're almost ready to bake your pie, she commented. Lila nodded and agreed. She explained that the only remaining step was to pour in the liquid ingredients and put it in the oven. The dough is the hardest part with the pecan pie, honestly, she said. The rest is pretty simple. Melissa could see that they were keeping Lila from important prep work, so she wished her luck with her dishes and said she was looking forward to seeing Lila at dinner time. Displaying the whisk with determination, 
Lila smiled and began slowly blending her cheese sauce on the stovetop as the water in the stock pot came to a simmer. Leaving Lila to her cooking, Melissa and Nikki let themselves out into the carpeted hallway. Nikki indicated she was going to head back upstairs and see everyone soon. Melissa waved goodbye and watched her friend slip into the stairwell. Melissa had a little more time to wait before her pie would be done and she could get the turkey going. So she stopped nearby and knocked on Dan's door. She would see what goodies he was preparing, she thought. As she stood outside his door, waiting for him to open it, she inhaled the delectable aroma of something frying in a pan. It smelled like butter and onions. After a moment, she heard him tell her to just come in. So she pushed the door open and stood in his living area. The layout was the same as all the other apartments, but this one was furnished with a cool contemporary vibe. All the furniture was gray and had simple straight edges. The coffee table was black. Peering into the kitchen, she saw Dan in the middle of sautéing something on the stovetop. I'm making the stuffing, he said, motioning her over. Melissa approached the stove and saw he had butter, onions, celery, and mushrooms in the pan. She could also detect a delicate garlic scent. Next to him on the counter, there was a large bowl of bread cubes. She could see from an empty nearby package that it was sourdough. As she watched, Dan took a measuring cup of broth and poured a little bit in the pan, scraping up the delicious-looking browned bits. Then he poured the rest of the broth into the bread and transferred the buttery contents of the frying pan to the bowl as well. He stirred it gently with a large wooden spoon to combine. Now for the parmesan and the artichokes, he said as he retrieved a nearby measuring cup full of grated cheese. The Parmesan, too, went into the bowl. Then he took a container filled with chopped marinated artichokes from the fridge and added those as well. He sprinkled the entire bowl with some type of seasoning that had been combined in a custard dish nearby. Lastly, he cracked an egg in a small bowl, beat it lightly, and added it to the bread mixture. He gently folded it over and over to combine. Once this was finished, He carried the bowl to a casserole dish that waited on the opposite counter and carefully spread all the stuffing into the dish. All done, he said, ready to bake. With that, he covered the dish in foil and slid it into the refrigerator. As he opened and closed the fridge, Melissa caught a glimpse of a bowl full of bright green salad inside. 
He told her the salad had apples and walnuts in it, which sounded perfect for the season. The corn casserole, which was his last dish, would only take a few minutes to put together and it would bake for an hour with the stuffing. It sounded like Dan had his contributions to dinner well under control. Melissa couldn't wait to try all of it. Having paid a visit to everyone, Melissa knew it was time to go upstairs and finish her own preparations. She told Dan she looked forward to seeing him later, and he waved goodbye as she slipped out of his apartment. Back in the hallway, she was pretty sure she could smell the lovely aroma of the baking pecan pie emanating from Lila's apartment. Inhaling deeply, she padded across the soft carpeting and through the stairwell door. When she arrived at her own apartment, she pushed the door open with a sense of delightful anticipation. With her pie just moments from being finished, the entire place was filled with the mouth-watering smell of the pumpkin and spices. It immediately brought back so many happy memories from her childhood when her parents would make pumpkin pie every holiday season. Even better, she knew her small kitchen would soon be filling the halls with the delicious scent of roasting turkey. Melissa opened the oven and carefully tested the pie. It needed just a few more moments. She closed the oven door and set up a baking rack on the opposite counter. She would let the pie cool there while she got the turkey ready to roast. Slipping a checkered apron over her head, she prepared for the main event. Her prep space had to be nice and clean and her ingredients needed to be at hand. In a few moments, she had a roasting pan, butter, fresh thyme, garlic, onion, and lemon ready to go. Pausing briefly to deposit her beautiful pie on the cooling rack, she lowered the heat. Then, Following instructions on a battered recipe card from her parents, she prepared the turkey to roast, setting it on top of a bed of vegetables in the pan. When her work was complete, she was very proud of herself. The oven chimed to let her know it was at the right temperature and she slid the heavy roasting pan into the oven, setting the built-in timer for two and a half hours. While the turkey was roasting, Melissa made a few more preparations. She put her two kitchen chairs, her desk chair, and a small armchair around the table. Then, she opened her desk drawer and found four place cards she had printed yesterday. Each one had a turkey on it and the name of one of the four dinner attendees. She placed these at the top of the plates around the table. Returning to the kitchen, she opened the cupboard 
and selected four of her fanciest drinking glasses. They were real crystal. She had found them in a second-hand store years ago. She also fetched the gravy boat. She only got to use it once or twice a year, but she loved having it on the table for special occasions. One by one, she positioned the glasses by the plates, and then she set the gravy boat on the counter. She could fill it when her gravy was ready later. At this point, Melissa realized she had a little time to relax. The turkey would need basting, but there was nothing to stop her from putting her feet up and getting in a bit of reading. She pulled the apron off and hung it on a hook near the kitchen. Then, taking a soft blanket from the arm of the couch, she snuggled into the cushions of her sofa and picked up her latest novel. The apartment was silent, except for the occasional small noises coming from the radiator and the oven. Through her thick window pane, she could see the remaining leaves dancing in the brisk November breeze outside. Every few seconds, one of them would separate from its branch and circle downward in a lazy spiral. It was a cozy feeling to be inside looking out on Autumn's final show. When the right amount of time had passed, Melissa opened the oven door to baste the turkey. It was just beginning to brown and the aromas floated into the room while she was doing her work. Closing the door again, She returned to the couch and set her watch to remind her when another half hour had passed. Snuggling under her blanket on the sofa, Melissa didn't even notice that she had dropped her book and dozed off. She drifted back out of her catnap to the tune her watch used for the alarm. It was time to baste the turkey again. Yawning, she stretched and smiled. A tiny nap was all she had needed to feel reinvigorated and ready to host. This time, the turkey was looking lovely and brown. She checked the temperature and saw it was about half done. This was perfect since her friends would be arriving soon. They would have time to settle in and enjoy a beverage before she needed to make gravy and serve. Melissa put away her book and then neatly folded her blanket and put it back on the arm of the couch. Making a circuit around the room, she saw everything was in place. The final touch was to light her votive candles and turn on some soft background music. While she was leaning over the candles, She heard a knock on the door. It was Nikki. She wanted to ask if Melissa could prop the door open so she could come back with her hot green bean casserole and then follow up with the pie. Melissa realized everyone would have their hands full, so she agreed that this was an excellent suggestion. 
using a heavy book as a doorstop. They let the door stand wide so that all the delicious arrivals could begin. As promised, Nikki was back momentarily with a long rectangular dish covered in foil. Melissa pointed to the kitchen counter and suggested Nikki leave it there. Then, before Melissa could say anything else, Nikki had left again to fetch her mashed potatoes and apple pie. While she was gone, Dan appeared. He had a large serving dish that was also covered in foil. Melissa knew this must be the sourdough stuffing. The parmesan smelled incredible. She pointed to a spot on the counter next to the green bean casserole and Dan gently set it down. He told her he'd be back in a minute with the salad and the warm corn casserole. He and Nikki laughed as they almost bumped into each other in the hallway. Nikki had returned with a bowl of buttery mashed potatoes cradled in one arm and an apple pie in her other hand. Looking around the kitchen, Melissa realized they were going to run out of space. Let's put the pies on the coffee table, she suggested. Nikki gently set the pie down and then continued to the kitchen to deposit the mashed potatoes. Moments later, Lila appeared in the doorway, carrying a very warm tray of decadent macaroni and cheese. Smiling, she set it on the top of the stove and removed her oven mitts. Nikki made a delightful noise and gingerly lifted the foil on top to reveal a molten level of garlicky breadcrumbs and cheddar. It smelled wonderful. Without ceremony, Lila turned around and said she'd be right back with the pecan pie. Most of the meal was here now, especially once Dan reappeared with a salad bowl cradled in one arm and a square dish of warm corn casserole deftly balanced on a pot holder. Leaning slightly, he placed the salad on the table and then set the corn casserole in the last space on the counter in the kitchen. While he was doing that, Melissa got her little bowl of cranberry relish out of the fridge and nestled it into the corner of the dining table with a serving spoon. Just at this moment, Lila arrived with her lovely sugar-scented pie and shut the door behind her. In her other hand, she held a can of some type of food. The others looked at her with puzzlement. What's that? Melissa asked. It's cranberry sauce, Lila responded. You may like that fancy New England relish, but my family always ate it out of a can and that's as it should be. She winked teasingly at Melissa who handed her a plate and invited her to liberate the cranberry sauce from its container. They all watched in amusement 
as the can-shaped gel emerged, wiggled, and settled onto the dish. As is the case with the time-honored green bean casserole, Thanksgiving food isn't always pretty, Nikki joked. A while later, the four friends sat happily around the little table, each with a plate piled high with delicious food. For each one of them, some of the dishes were familiar, and others were destined to become new favorites. Music played softly in the room, and toasts were exchanged. Each person at the table recounted funny tales and good memories from Thanksgiving's past. Whether they were spent in Massachusetts, Minnesota, California, or the Carolinas. Melissa reflected on how wonderfully the meal had come together. Having each person take on part of the work was so much easier and four times as fun. Plus, as Nikki pointed out, there would be much more leftover pie this way. The sun set on their gathering, and outside, the twilight filled with the hallmark chill of the season. The last of the brown leaves whispered in the November evening, bidding their branches farewell and spinning lazily to the earth. And inside the four walls of a city apartment building, Melissa, Nikki, Lila, and Dan were content.